the epic quest to bring Julian Kristen Lutz to OCAD University. Me Julian Kristen Lutz, PKA Director X, FKA Little X, a 40-something Canadian of Trinidadian and Swiss heritages, he's an award-winning director of music videos, commercials, movies. The GOAT <laughs> of music videos, he started from the bottom making graphic design flyers for parties and now he's here. And where is here? OCAD University, a 144 years old institution that does not look a day over the 12 years of the Sharp Center for Design. They and their non-binary gender are the leading institution for art and design media education in Canada. I should introduce myself. I am Dean Dory Tunstall, your only black dean of design anywhere in the world and the narrator of this exciting quest. In a clandestine meeting location back in October 2018, the young, gifted, and black in Toronto meet. A stranger describes his recent TEDx talk on using meditations to address gun violence. My ears perk up. That sounds like respectful design. I decide we must recruit this cool director guy to lead meditation for all of our OCAD students. The next day, I Google the names on the stranger's card. Julian Kristen Lutz brings this weird hip hop yoga commercial with cows. Director X results in a long scroll of his list of professional accomplishments. Over 117 director credits, including three feature films and numerous commercials and awards. We have to bring him to OKAGU, but how? The journey begins when we decide to have OKAGU students prepare the strategic workshop and plan for Julian's Operation Prefrontal Cortex, an initiative to bring meditation to schools, communities experiencing violence, correctional facilities, and individuals formerly incarcerated. Okay, you and Julian both organize our merry bands. Julian brings in his co-founders, Danielle Adams and Sarah Basso. Okay, you forms a super team for the Design for program of Lynn Noor, Greg Cho, Bomi Do, Charlotte Latraverse, and Ian Kamal, with great support from the Center for Emerging Artists and Designers and Marianne Lee in the Faculty Design Office. The journey is hard. Julian is having to rearrange his production schedules to meet with students. The students are pulling all-nighters to meet the deadlines. Yet the workshop day arrives with two sessions and over 70 participants. Our merry bands of students are intoxicated with joy and lack of sleep, and the outcomes are declared by Julian and his team a great success. <laughs> Having passed through one ordeal, now comes the next stage of the journey, organizing the meditation event for OCAG University students. The frustrations begin. Contracts cannot be signed, funds are hard to raise. Okay, you wonders if Director X is too famous and extra security for the event needed. Okay, you begins to think Director X is too sex, drugs, and hip hop for the event, but he tells us Hip hop is what I do, not who I am. Let me show you who is Julian Christian Lutz. With his magic miracle iPad, he shows us Death of the Sun, Life of the Earth, an exhibition for Nuit Blanche and a devotion to sustainability and planet Earth. He shows us his Mr. Tacky on series and vice where he uses scientific methods to investigate fringe topics such as orgone energies. He shows us his Clio award-winning seven mother short film for Pierre Moss and more to come. We can clearly see who is Julian Christian Lutz a philanthropist, father, mentor, writer, producer, meditation practitioner, and advocate and creator of the environmental spectacles, as well as a director of music videos, commercials, movies, all the things that we value in respectful design. And this is why we've given Julian Christian Lutz the highest honor of OCAG University, the honorary doctorate. Please, Dr. Lutz, lead our new graduates in meditation to visualize their futures, in this quest and bring a new one with OCAD University. Congratulations, OCAD class of 2020. It has been a wild year, but you're here. You are graduating. You are making the transition from the learning of art to the business of art. And um, they've asked me to come talk to you a bit about that. So yeah, let's have a talk. Let's talk about the world that awaits you out there. Um, you know, first choice is 
Are you going to be someone who works for yourself or are you going to work for other people? Are you going to have clients? Well, if you're going to work for yourself, well, we know what comes with that. You work for yourself. You make your art, you sell it, you make your money. Um, with that comes, you know, a lot of responsibility. But that's what it is. And that's a choice that you've made. More power to you. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big leap to take. And if you had the talent to make that happen, man, geez, that's incredible. Uh, for the rest of us, there is the working with clients. And working with clients is its own thing. And if you're going to work with clients, there's still choices to make. Are you going to be the type of artist that will only work on jobs they feel passionate about, jobs they care about? Or are you going to be the type of artist that works with who has the check and can afford your time? If you're going to be the artist who works only on jobs you're passionate about, you're going to have the experience of turning down work. And sometimes it doesn't always feel so good. Sometimes someone's going to show up with a lot of money for a job, but it doesn't move you. And you're going to make that decision to not do it. Um, and it's a choice to make. And you should follow that choice if that's where your heart takes you. The artists who make those choices have a body of work that is often very consistent. And depending on your skill level, see how good it will be. I mean, you're graduating from OCAD. I'm sure it's incredible. But that's what comes with that territory. Um, doing work that you really feel passionate about, work that you care about, to make work that you can feel proud about. Then there is the work for hire, a bit of a mercenary. We got a job, we can afford you. And then you say, okay, well, those are my requirements. I'll do it. And with that comes a larger diversity of work. You're gonna be making things sometimes you don't always feel so passionate about, and that's fine. Um, people need quality work. Sometimes the, the work involved is not gonna be the most artistic, but it needs to get done and it needs to get done competently. And that's a choice you make. Um, that job, has a lot more flow you're you know you're gonna have a lot more people knocking on your door and a, a lot fuller plate but with that fuller plate comes its own kind of warning and that is sleepwalking through work and you have to be very very careful not to if you begin to just kind of give them a semi sort of hey take this kind of thing the clients will notice they came to you because you're good they came to you because they want someone who cares and even though it's not something you feel passionate about, you can feel passionate about your craft and make sure you're giving them good work. Um, these are real things you're going to have to consider as you go out into the world, real choices you're going to have to make. So you can start making them now. Start thinking about it right now, this very second. Um, but with that comes uh, another little bit, working with the client. And this is something um, I find doesn't get talked about a lot. Working with the client for... Uh, the two that choose to work with clients is a big part of it. I mean, if you were that first category where you work for yourself, well, then you're your own client and then you're fine. I hope you like yourself. Have fun. Um, if you've decided to go down the client road, even if you, um, someone who's decided you're only gonna work on work you're passionate about, you're gonna have a client and the client's gonna have something to say. So you're gonna have to make that, you're gonna have to be honest with yourself. Do you collaborate and do you collaborate well? If you can't collaborate, then don't say you do. Be honest with yourself and do your own work and go down that road. If you can't handle someone saying change this or I think this should be that and not have a conversation about it and be open to changing it, you're in the wrong business. Seriously. You got to decide and you have to be honest with yourself because if you come do the job saying you're a collaborator and then when you got the job won't collaborate that won't go well for you down the road. It won't go down well for you on that job. It's, it's bad. It's lying. So be clear. Can you collaborate? If yes, good. Now come the two parts of collaborating. Um, are you going to collaborate and just do as told? Because they didn't hire you to be an operator. They hired you to be an artist. They hired you to bring your skill set. They hired you to bring your passion and professionalism. And if you start doing work where the client says, make it red and you just make it red, the client is going to look at you a little funny. They're not going to say, oh, well, great to work with this person. They just do whatever I say. They hired you for a reason. They hired you for you. And if you remove you from the equation, they're going to be upset. They might not know it. This is upsetting them, but there's a feeling in them. They're not happy. They're not happy with how that went. And they'll remember it and they won't call you back. And they may tell other people about the experience as well. Then there is how you do it, 
how do you work with a client um, and find that middle ground between I'm not changing anything on my work and I'll change whatever you like, however you like it. Well, it's recognizing that your client is connected to the work as well. Sometimes artists look at their client as people who are a nuisance to getting the work done. And it's, it's not that. Um, they've been working with this job for a while. After you're done, they're going to take that work that you've done and go on and do whatever they're going to do with it. So it's very, very important to them. And they have an instinct about that work as well. And if you embrace your client, if you embrace that part of them, you actually make better work because that instinct will see things that you might not have noticed. So I use this uh, analogy a lot and you, people call it the note behind the note. Um, say you're doing a job and you've painted a wall red and the client comes along and says, mm, I don't know about red, we should make it pink. Now, if you make it pink, you're risking going, going down that road that we spoke about before where you're just blindly doing what they say and then your client begins to look at you like, why are you here if you're just doing whatever I say? If you refuse to make it any other color but red, then the client's gonna look at you and say, why am I, this guy won't do anything. This, I, everything I say to them just is, it's always a problem and, I, and it has to change. And then you're gonna find um, that they are right. The wall shouldn't be red because they have an instinct about it, but not pink. The middle ground is treating those comments from a client as what I've been saying, an instinct, an indicator, almost like a coach on the field. And they come and say, oh, I don't know if this wall, this wall shouldn't be red, we should make it pink. And you look at it and say, not pink, purple. And then the client, purple, they've been heard. They were right, it needed to change. It needed to elevate it and you've elevated it. You've, you've, you've taken it to a new place. And when you work with your client like that, you find you make better work by listening to their notes, um, looking for that note behind the note, um, not jumping to attention and doing whatever they say, but, at the, but not stomping your feet and saying you're not gonna do anything, really looking at it and trying to implement their note. Because in that trying to implement, you might find something better. I often do, I often do. And then there are also clients that are reasonable. You go and you try it, and you try and you try and make their note work. And when it doesn't work, you say, "Look, all the things we tried." And they go, "Oh yeah, it doesn't work." Yeah, this is how you do it, man. This is the world that's awaiting you. It is an amazing, amazing life making art, paying your bills. It feels incredible. Um, there's people right now in a cubicle dreaming and wishing they could do these things, and here you are on your path to doing it. It is a team sport, and that's how you win championships: passing the ball around, everyone taking their shots. Because when the job wins the award, everybody gets award. Everyone gets the credit. It's an amazing thing, man. I'm wishing you guys a lot of luck. And I'm going to give you one more piece of advice that I wish someone had given me when I was in your age range. Um, meditation. You saw in the introduction to my talk right now, Dean Dory saying that I was going to lead you through a meditation. And I'm going to lead you through a meditation. Because there's amazing benefits that come from it. Um, but as an artist, they're helpful as well. The building of your brain, meditation changes the brain. The parts of your brain that should be bigger, it will make bigger. The parts of your brain that should be smaller, it will make it smaller. You'll be able to deal with stress better. You'll be able to handle your emotions better. Uh, the parts of your brain that handle learning and memory and creativity, they become larger. The decision-making parts, they become larger. It is a great practice to get into. It will really change your life for the better. So I'm encouraging you to make this a practice for yourself. I have an organization that I started with my friends called Operation Prefrontal Cortex, and our mission is to use meditation to reduce violence. So um, for us creatives, it'll help us as creatives, and for those of us in our society that have real trauma to overcome, it can help them as well. It's a wonderful tool. So let's do a quick one. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And as you exhale, visualize and repeat the number three, three times. Now, think about your scalp. Visualize the flowing of blood where hair meets skin and skull and the organs and tell it to relax. Think about your eyes. Think about everything involved. 
blood flowing, the organs, the skin, and tell it all to relax. Think about your tongue. Tell it to relax. Think about your throat. Tell it to relax. Think about your shoulder and chest. Tell it to relax. Think about your arms all the way down to your hands. Tell it to relax. Breathing deep, continue to breathe deep. Think about your abdomen. Tell it to relax. Think about your hips. Tell it all to relax. Think about your legs, your calves, your feet, the muscles, the organs, the bone, the flowing blood. Tell it all to relax. Now take a deep breath, and as you exhale, visualize the number two three times. Now, I want you to visualize a place that you find serene and calm, a place where you feel safe and comfortable. Using all your senses, visualize that place, see yourself in that place. Take a deep breath. And as you exhale, visualize and repeat the number one three times. Now, I'm going to count you down from nine to zero, feeling yourself go to a deeper state of mind. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. In this deeper state of mind, I want you to visualize a goal. Visualize it using all your senses. See where you are, see who's there, see it all clearly. Now project great gratitude and love at that visualization. I'm gonna count from zero to nine and make a sound. And when I make that sound, open your eyes feeling fresh and awake better than you did before. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go. I hope that was good for you. I hope you continue to take up the practice, begin to meditate for longer times. And I hope you have a great life as an artist, making work you are proud of, work you love, work that has an amazing uh, impact and effect on the world at large. You are on your way. Congratulations, OCAD, graduating class of 2020. I applaud you, I applaud yourself.